The manufacture of the lower fuselage has been a major undertaking for the Whirlwind Fighter project. The project commissioned airframe assemblies of the Isle of Wight to part roll all 10 of the skin panels on the original Westland machinery. The skin planks then required a great deal of further work to qualify and finalise the plank's contours and compound curvatures. The form of the lower fuselage is much more complex than the upper section. The upper section having an ogival cross section while tapering in a teardrop plan form from the cockpit section joint to the tail fin joint. The added manufacturing complication for the lower section is the additional upsweep from the cockpit joint to the tail joint. The upsweep is not a linear transition, it requires a variable curvature along its 12 and a half foot length. The one piece skin planks being far too long for conventional English wheel equipment, the Whirlwind Fighter project produced a cross axis wheeling machine to accommodate the curvature in the planks. A large number of templates were produced, taken from the 3D model to ensure the variable swept contours of the skin planks were accurately reproduced. The same complexity also exists for the T-section stringers that join the planks together at the butt joints. The Whirlwind Fighter project produced its own tooling to produce the variable curved cross-section profile along the 12 foot long stringers. With the skin planks having been rolled, special attention was required to ensure the flat profile of the skin plank drawings were accurately transferred to the 3D skins. Many hours of trimming required to ensure the skin butt joints matched to their adjacent planks. Each stringer requires 288 jig drilled holes. These holes then being match drilled to their respective skin planks. The planks then having each hole countersunk for flush riveting requiring 1880 rivets for the lower skins alone. The construction of the lower fuselage holds a number of internal structures consisting of three transverse flange frames. The second frame being the foundation for the flying control tube roller bearing half bulkhead. Located at mid span, a transverse platform houses the R3003 identification friend or foe equipment and also mounts the propeller de icing tank. Located between the two forward frames, are two tapered transverse beams that house the sliding trolley for the radio equipment. The beams are situated below the radio hatch aperture in the upper section. Below the radio beams positioned to starboard attached to the fuselage skin is the holding cradle for the 75 litre pilot's oxygen tank. Mating of the upper and lower sections required an adjustable support structure to be manufactured and attached to the assembly jig, allowing for the fitting and alignment of the two sections. The adjustment, fitting and joining of the two sections required many, many hours of labour. 
The fuselage connection to the cockpit section is strengthened by a complex sawtooth profile doubler ring riveted by through rivets to the stringers and to the intercostals. Please keep a lookout for the next update detailing the internal fit out of the fuselage ready for transportation to the Kent Battle of Britain Museum scheduled for the last week in June. The Whirlwind Fighter Project would like to extend a thank you for all the positive comments and donations received in response to the engineering update videos. Thank you. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a dedicated group of volunteers. If you feel you can assist in the project's aim of creating a complete reproduction of this lost iconic World War II fighter, please visit our website and Facebook page for details. Also, visit our active partner and home of P7056, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum Trust at Hawkinge. Many thanks for watching.